have an application that you want to deploy to Azure in an automated way? Well, before you deploy that application's code, you need to have some Azure infrastructure in place for it to run on. Well, we have you covered in this episode as we walk through how to deploy that Azure infrastructure using GitHub Actions. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cloud with Chris. You're with me, Chris Reddington, and we will be talking about all things cloud. So it's the next episode in our series of looking at GitHub Actions and Azure. And as we mentioned in the intro there, we, uh, we of course have to go and deploy some infrastructure for our application code. So we're going to go ahead and carry on moving very swiftly through here, uh, focusing on the uh, deploying ARM templates using GitHub Actions. So let me go ahead and uh, just go and share my screen. So as a recap, we've got our code in GitHub and we created a dummy uh, GitHub action that we can go and deploy um, just to log in and then run some kind of uh, resource group list is what we did last time. So now what we're going to do is build upon that and understand how we can go and deploy ARM templates to Azure. So as a quick recap, maybe for some people or just a brief explanation for others who don't know yet, uh, an ARM template or an Azure Resource Manager template uh, is a concept called infrastructure as code. And it's a way that we can describe our infrastructure using some kind of code. Now, it's different to something like PowerShell or Azure CLI because it's deterministic, it's declarative, and it's idempotent. So what that means is it's very predictable in terms of what we're going to have deployed. So a bit like Terraform, which is an open source uh, framework to do infrastructure as code, if you like, uh, what we do with ARM templates, similarly to Terraform, is we describe what we want deployed, not how we want to deploy it. And that is the main difference between something like PowerShell or Azure CLI. Because if you think about it, with those uh, languages, we have to have lots of if statements and conditionals and checks and balances. You know, if the resources already exist, then do this thing, otherwise do this, and then do this. But with ARM templates, it's just a case of here is the resources or here are the resources I want to go and deploy. Azure, you go and do your thing. I don't care how you do it. Just go and make it happen. So that's what we're going to be deploying here today through our code and GitHub Actions. So um, first things first is we'll need to do a little bit of um, organization on our project. So we're going to move the source code that we created previously uh, into a separate folder here. Um, of course, the... Oops, where are we going? We're going into source. There we go. Um, so what we're going to do is... And let me just select that again because uh, I mucked that up. There we go. So there's some of it gone into source and then we'll put the rest of it in there as well. Um, remember that the .github folder does need to live at the root of the repository because of this workflows uh, folder and then the GitHub actions that it's uh, pushing through. So we're going to have a source folder and we'll just have something like a templates folder here as well. And I'm going to navigate back to my uh, arm to my uh, GitHub repository here. And what I'm actually going to show you is this Azure Quick Start Templates Gallery. So if I just go to the main root of this repository for a moment, uh, because some of you may not have seen this before, uh, if you go to github.com slash Azure slash Azure dash Quick Start dash Templates, there's a whole repository of different ARM templates which are available for you to go and use. And when I say there's a whole repository, as I keep scrolling here, you can really see the extent of the number of template samples which are available here for you to try. Now, the obvious caveat here is these are all samples. You'll need to tweak things based upon your specific scenario, but they're a really good way to get going very quickly uh, if you're trying to get started with ARM templates. So do be aware of uh, those as a resource that you can go and use. 
So what we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and deploy uh, this particular ARM template. Um, it's called the 101 Web App Basic Windows. So what we're going to do is we're going to deploy a uh, Windows app service uh, based upon .NET is what we're going to do. And we're going to use this template here. So we're going to go and copy that across here, create a new file and we'll call it Azure Deploy.json. If I had a number of different templates, I'd probably give it a more meaningful name. But for the purposes of what we're doing here, absolutely fine. Now, as a very, very quick explanation here, um, what you have with an ARM template is a few different sections. You have your schema, uh, you have your content version, you have parameters, you have variables, and then you have your resources. And sometimes you will have outputs as well. Um, now, parameters are a bit like what you would expect from a programming perspective. We have some kind of code that we want to go and make reusable. Um, so maybe from a calculator program, for example, we wouldn't have methods to calculate one and one, one and two, one and three, one and four. We would have the add function and we'd have some parameters to go and uh, add those two numbers together. Same idea here with uh, parameters inside of ARM templates. Uh, and then variables, uh, again, very similar to what you would expect with uh, programming as well. Uh, you have some kind of snippet that you want to reuse throughout your code. Well, that is where you would go ahead then and use a variable. So as we scroll down, then you can see we have our resources defined. And this is all uh, JSON, as you can see here. Um, these resources each have an API version. They all have a type and you have to give your resource a name. Uh, that name is the same name that you would give it if you were using the Azure portal to go and uh, create things there. And then uh, the location itself uh, is a parameter that we're passing in. And notice that syntax there with the square braces uh, to go and reference things which are like runtime evaluated there. So the parameters, for example. So that creates our app service plan. Uh, so that's like our underlying server farm for our websites. And then we have the actual websites themselves. Um, now, what you can see here on this example is a nested resource. And this nested resource just goes ahead and deploys uh, some source code for us. Now, because this is one of the samples from uh, the Azure Quick Start Templates repository, that makes sense. But for the continuation of this series, we're not going to deploy this sample um, in terms of this uh, code, I mean, here for the, uh, for the application running on top. We'll deploy the code we've been running and working on, the MVC app for .NET Core. So we're going to go ahead and just remove that extra resources block there for now and just deploy the uh, default uh, app service that uh, app service page that gets released there. Okay, so we have so far a new folder for our source, a new folder for our templates. Uh, we now need to go ahead and update our workflow file because as you remember from last time, uh, we have the Azure login step and we have an AZ group list command. So it's uh, just listing out the resource groups that we have there. So what we can do is we can jump back over to the uh, github.com pages uh, and take a look at the Azure slash arm dash deploy repository. And this is where uh, the GitHub action for deploying Azure Resource Manager templates lives. So as I scroll down here, you can see some examples of how we can go and do that. So uh, there's this Azure slash arm dash deploy action. It has a with uh, kind of subsection there. Uh, and then we need to pass in things like our subscription ID, our resource group name, uh, where the template lives, and then some parameters as well if we need them. Um, we won't need to pass in any parameters because, uh, as you may have noticed, if we jump back to the template, our parameters all have default values associated with them. Um, and those default values happen to be absolutely fine for uh, what we're talking about here. So we'll go ahead and leave those as is. So then let's jump to our GitHub Actions workflow file, uh, paste in that uh, uses uh, snippet from the examples there. And now we just need to go ahead and uh, complete the, uh, the information that we need to complete there. So first things first is we need a resource group. So we could, of course, deploy using a subscription level deployment, but um, for the purposes of what we're doing here, we'll just go and create a resource group for now. 
Uh, so we'll create that in uh, my MSDN account. We'll create it in North Europe, as that's fairly close to me. And we'll just call it something like Cloud with Chris GHRG, so for GitHub. Um, that looks good to me. So we'll go ahead and create that. And now we can see our resource group has been created. So we'll jump back. We will put that into the template there. Uh, we need to adjust the template path to go to the dot templates folder and then the Azure deploy.json. And that should be uh, just the templates folder, sorry. Um, and then we just need to get our subscription ID as well. So we'll jump back and it is obfuscated uh, through one of the extensions that I have on screen. But of course, as soon as I paste that into VS Code, you will see that. Um, but there we go. That is our subscription ID. Uh, so from that perspective, it looks like mostly we've got everything done there that we need. But if you remember from last time, I said I was going to delete the, uh, the secret from my uh, GitHub repository. Um, so once again, as you may have seen in uh, the arm-deploy repository here, there is a dependency on the Azure login task for this GitHub action to run. I mentioned last time not all of the Azure actions have that dependency, uh, but this one does. So what we'll need to do again is just jump back to the Azure login step there. Just go and take a look at the uh, commands here to go and uh, get that uh, that service principle here. So we'll once again go and uh, and create that here. So I'm just going to bring uh, Notepad on screen, uh, Cloud with Chris, GitHub, uh, App Deploy, for example. Uh, and then we will go ahead and grant it subscription level access uh, from a contributor perspective there. Again, generally I wouldn't do that. I'd do principle of least privilege, but for the purposes of this quick uh, example, um, should be fine here. So we're just going to go ahead now and paste that into our terminal to get the necessary uh, credentials for our service principle. There they are, the JSON output. And if you remember, we've got to go ahead to our uh, repository here, go to our repository secrets, and we come in here and update the credentials. Uh, now, I didn't delete the credentials from uh, the repository previously, uh, but I did delete the service principles. So obviously uh, nothing could be logged into there. Good. So uh, let's go ahead then and commit those changes to our repository. So uh, reorg of structure and uh, initial arm deployment is what we're going to call that commit. Um, so we're going to stage those changes. As a reminder, these are the files that we want to update in our local version control. As soon as we hit commit there, they have now been versioned in our local system. Uh, so we can go back over time and take a look at the history, who's made those changes. Uh, and then what we need to do to push those up to GitHub is just uh, do that push command there then as well. So now, as we navigate to our GitHub Actions, we should see, and there we have it, uh, the GitHub Actions has been kicked off there. So if we just click on that particular workflow and uh, just wait for that one to appear and see what that gives us. So we can see, uh, if we start looking at a bit more depth, we have this uh, setup job step. And what you'll see in a moment once we're able to go ahead and expand that selection here, there we go, um, is that setup job step, what it will do is it will go ahead and uh, do some downloading of the GitHub actions and the various bits and pieces that are needed for my overall workflow to go and run there. Now, I'm expecting this to fail, actually, because... Um, there is something that we haven't done. And there we go. You can see that that has failed there. Um, let me just refresh that page just so you can see some of the logs. Uh, there we go. Um, so you can see there's no such file dot template slash Azure deploy dot JSON. And why is that? Because it was clearly in our GitHub repository. Well, actually, there is a checkout step. So you need to check out the code that uh, that you're referring to there. We didn't put that step in yet. So if I just go back into my sample here, uh, go ahead and add that GitHub action in, add checkout step. 
There we go. And then we commit that change and push that up. Now what we can do is go ahead and uh, run that one here. And whilst that's running in the background, as I mentioned, we have this setup job step. And what you can see here is we get some information about the runner that we're using from GitHub. Uh, because I'm not using a self-hosted runner, I'm using one of the ones from GitHub directly. We can see what operating system that's running on, uh, the virtual environment there. And then we can also see, as I mentioned, uh, it's downloading some of the uh, actions that we've specified in that workflow file. So in the next run, we'll see it downloading the uh, checkout step there as well. And there you go. You can see, uh, as I just mentioned, that extra step has now been uh, downloaded and uh, as we can see, it's uh, actually running there for us here. So if we jump over to the Azure portal, uh, we should be able to see very shortly, there we go, uh, that there is an update in progress. So we can see that that deployment Azure Deploy is the name of the template that we sent across to Azure uh, is being deployed. We can see already that a server farm is being created. That's our app service plan. Uh, and when we look at the inputs, uh, of course, you can see they're blurred out because of one of my extensions here. Um, but those are those default values that got passed in by the ARM template there. And we can, of course, even go and see the template itself that got deployed as well uh, through the Azure portal here. And if we did have outputs from the template, we could see those there as well. One side thing while we're on this page, um, just worth being aware of, if you have any secrets that you're passing in, like passwords, SSH keys, those kind of things, um, there is a type in ARM templates that you can use called secure string. Make sure you use that because it obfuscates those inputs and those outputs. And it also makes sure with tools like uh, Azure DevOps, for example, that they get uh, uh, kind of starred out from uh, any potential ARM logs that you might be uh, uh, deploying out there or showing there. Okay, so let's jump back to the GitHub action. You can see that now this has actually completed. So if we navigate back to our resource group view, we can see that we've got the app service plan and the app service. Uh, and then if we click on this link, we should be able to get the default app service page here. And there we have it. We have an app service deployed. So we've very quickly shown how we've changed the code in our repository, started setting up a bit of a structure. Uh, and you can see where we're moving towards now that we're now at a stage where we can deploy our code to app service. And you've guessed it, that is exactly what we will be talking about next time. So if you want to see a little bit about how we deploy that .NET code to Azure app service, then hang around and take a look at the next video. Until then, bye for now.